Hi guys, so today what we learned in class was uh, just some of the basics of Touch Designer. Uh, if you uh, need to download it for your own computer, you can just go to the Touch Designer uh, website uh, and go to the Get It Now area. And you can see that uh, for non-commercial use, uh, it is free. So go ahead and download it for your personal machine. Uh, the limitations are uh, 1280 by 1280 for video or uh, images. So something to keep in mind when you're, you're working with the free version. Um, so in order for us to make sure that uh, we had something uh, that was going to be compatible, is we took a couple of uh, screen captures for different things. Like you can see, I have some water here and I exported it in QuickTime as 720p which makes it 1280 by 720 so we went ahead and exported all four of these uh, to the right resolution. Uh, in the lab we have Touch Designer installed on every machine so if you just double click Touch Designer in the application folder you'll be able to down, uh, just open it up. It'll start you off with the username and password. Uh, you need to create an account if you do not already have one. Uh, if you don't have one, go here and it'll send you to the website where you can create one. Uh, for me, I have one. We're going to go ahead and sign in. It says I've got six remaining licenses uh, and so I'm going to create a key. And this is what you'll do in the lab and then you'll be uh, presented with this screen. We're now in Touch Designer and uh, what we're going to do is a basic video player for today. Uh, this will entail us uh, using uh, a keyboard to switch between uh, videos. Uh, uh, we will also use an automated counter to count um, or to automatically switch the videos. And then finally we're going to use a MIDI slider to allow us to crossfade um, between multiple videos um, in this presentation. So let's get started. Uh, we talked a little bit about our interface here with chops and uh, tops and those kinds of things in class. Uh, you guys all know that uh, each one of these modules or nodes here uh, is all the information about each one is located in, the, in this inspector window here. Uh, currently we have our frames per second set to 60. Uh, in class we lowered these to 30. Um, doesn't matter but you can put them at anything you want and uh, we have this timeline playing from uh, 0 to 600 um, as you can kind of see. And that'll be useful in the future because we'll be needing that number eventually. Um, but that allows the movies to actually play. Uh, if we click on any one of these nodes to select it, uh, you can click on this little blue uh, dot here by the plus and you can actually show that in the background. So for instance, if I want to show this one, you can see that this movie file in is static. And on this side, uh, you can see the output is dynamic. It's actually using this noise um, chop. Uh, to modify it. So I'm going to turn these little blue dots off and on uh, throughout this presentation so you guys can see this. Uh, we also have um, tutorials that you guys can watch in, you know, just click on the tutorials tab here and that'll get you out to the internet where you can uh, watch some tutorials on other things. Okay, we're going to uh, be bringing in our own movies, uh, the ones that we exported from QuickTime uh, as um, 720p movies. So what I'm going to do is right mouse button click and uh, select these little elements and delete them because we're not going to be using them anymore. So I'm just going to hit the big delete. I'm going to leave this output uh, because we need this because this is a presentation. So it needs to go out. Think of this like a projector. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a movie. And the way you bring in elements here is just double click the background. Uh, we know that this will be a texture operator or a top. Uh, that we're looking for and what we're going to search for is the word movie, M-O-V-I-E. And what that will do is it will allow us to see the only two things in this field that uh, have the word movie and we're going to do movie file in. We're going to click here and you notice by default it is a banana um, and it's actually an image so images are considered movies in Touch Designer, just a FYI. Uh, if I want to change this banana into something else I can just hit this little plus button here and what I can do then is go and find uh, my folder where I put all my movies, which is uh, on the desktop uh, under media. So I'm going to select Sky with Clouds, 720p, and you can see because our timeline's moving that we see the movie moving too. Uh, I can connect this by clicking on the right hand output here and putting this into the left hand input on the out. And you'll notice now I have a movie playing on my output 
uh, this is what's playing, right? And it'll continue playing uh, up to the number 600. Uh, by default, this movie is set to loop. Uh, so you can kind of see um, where it has the word uh, repeat and then loop. Uh, you can change how fast it's going. You can change uh, the speed of it, make it slower. So you can slow it down, 0.5. Uh, now it's going much slower as you can kind of see or you can speed it up to like two So there's all the things that you can do here um, To make this movie either, you know, go faster slower those kinds of things. So every movie file in has that ability Can't okay, turn this off so you can see it. Okay, this is interesting, but not that interesting uh, The next thing we're gonna do is like bring in the rest of the movies the easier way to bring in a movie is just to physically find it Here's our media folder with our movies. And all I'm gonna do is just drag these movies in one at a time until all four movies are in my space here. And then I'm just gonna arrange them to the on the left-hand side just by clicking on them and dragging them. And you can see that uh, if I tried to uh, show you this movie in the output in the projector, uh, it will replace the previous movie uh, chord and it is now the thing that's going out. And the same thing as if I try to so attach this to the output it replaces the chord so I have to physically do this every time I want to change the output uh, you know to change the movies and that's not uh, a very interesting movie player so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch these um, automatically using our keyboard and here's how we're gonna do it we're gonna double click in the space here and what we're gonna do is type in the word switch s w i t c h and you'll see in our tops there is a switcher that allows us to switch between inputs and you'll notice that the input for the out is very thin here but the input for the switch has uh, is very thick and so this allows us to put as many things as we want into the switch you can kind of see there's one two three and four so now we have four items going in our switch now the switch is going to replace them this this cord so one thing you can do is you can right click on the yellow cord to disconnect it like this or you could have just replaced the switch cord with the moving water cord just by putting it into the output like we did before so far it looks like the switch is not working because it's just putting in this movie file here but if you click on it you'll notice that you do have a slider here and if the slider goes above one boop it changes to the next movie if the slider goes to the next number, two, it changes to the next movie, and the next movie, et cetera, et cetera. So if you had 50 movies, that switch could change, that slider could keep going. So we've got our movie uh, player here, which is working great, but it would be nice if we could switch this using like the buttons on our uh, keyboard, like maybe the numbers one, two, three, and four. So that's what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna use our keyboard uh, to control this switch. So we start by double clicking the background and this time instead of the texture operators we're going to go to the channel operators because this is where we can get our keyboard in and you'll notice they have a lot of inputs uh, that you can select um, but we're going to only need uh, the keyboard in for now. We'll also be using MIDI in later but for now keyboard in. Uh, and this is how it works. We have the keyboard in. We look at our inspector up here and it says it's only looking to see if key number one is pressed. So if I press key number one, you'll see something happens. If I press key number two, nothing happens. So key one is the only one being looked at. So first thing I need to do is actually add some keys here for it to keep an eye on. So I'm gonna hit a comma or put a comma in and put two comma, three comma, four, because I know I have four videos here, one, two, three, four. Now if I push the key number one, Great, two, great, three, great, four, great, five, nothing happens, perfect. So at this point, I have to actually hold the key down in order for me to have this key actually on. As soon as I let go, it goes back to zero, which is not what I want, okay? So I'm gonna need another operator in order for me to have this toggle down. And the operator we're gonna select by double clicking the background, uh, we're gonna select the logic operator, L-O-G-I-C. And what this will do is if I hook this keyboard into the logic and you push one, two, three, four, it doesn't do anything right away. But you'll see that if we go to channel preop, 
I can actually select radio button and what that does is it remembers the last choice so I push one it's on one if I push two it's on two and if I let go of the two it stays on two three three four four you get the idea okay so so far pretty good but here's the problem our logic has four different possibilities uh, and it's pushing out four different channels of data and I only want one thing to come out I want the number one two three and four so we have one more chop that we need to put in and that's called the fan and what a fan does is if I put that in here uh, a fan actually is kind of like when you're dealing cards uh, it gives uh, it takes one deck of cards and it fans it out to many people in this case eight people uh, that's great if you have one input and you want to give it to eight different people uh, we have the opposite issue we want four things to turn into one thing and the way we do that is we go to our fan and we, instead of fanning things out we're gonna fan them in which is the opposite once you do that you can do one two three and four and you notice that it only keeps that one input based on our keyboard input okay uh, at this point this is a number that we're ready to hand over to the switch but uh, normally what we do in case we want to add anything else a little bit of math or something is we put one more operator in called the null and the null does absolutely nothing hence the word null uh, but it is useful because it acts as like a placeholder uh, for this last uh, element so if we do need to add and or change anything in the sequence it will allow us to change things okay how do I get this number one two three four into or zero one two three because it's four things how do I get it into this area here this index because that's what I want to change right um, so this is how you do it you select the null operator you could have done it with the fan as well but the null you hit the little plus button which kind of locks everything up so now I can actually grab the value here and what I do is then I I'm going to drag this into this point this area this box here so I'm going to just click hold drag and let go export chop and what that does as you can kind of see it allows us to uh, take the value of this null and put it into this area that's called index really what it did if I click on this it'll say hey take the null one uh, and give me the K value and you can see the K value is like zero now and then if I click it here it's like two one three and that's really all you could have typed this right here if you had wanted to just like this uh, but that's how you do it uh, I can undo this by just clicking it and now we have a way of switching using our keyboard you can kind of see uh, one two three four um, switching between uh, the four different videos and you could go higher if you want okay the next thing I would like to do is go over how do I automate this say I don't want to use the keyboard to switch between uh, these four videos uh, is there a possibility of just counting them or automating the, the switching uh, based on maybe time uh, let's go ahead and try that so we're gonna take our switch here and I'm gonna copy it and now I'm going to paste it again and when I paste it I get a secondary switch you can kind of see it here with all the inputs already in there uh, but this time there's a, a warning triangle and the warning says export not found um, that means that there is no nothing that it's going to right so if I were to now connect this to the out now it's working um, and it's saying it's missing a parameter an index parameter and we we knew that that was going to be the case because we used the index parameter here right with the null but we didn't give this the parameter it's actually missing that there's nothing here it was looking for this but it doesn't have one so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to create a new parameter to put in here and um, let's go ahead and do that right now so we're going to count from 0 to 3 automatically and we're going to use a count um, node uh, located in our uh, chops area so count uh, and what a count does is it just counts uh, from uh, a number zero to uh, infinity really uh, and it comes with three inputs you notice how these um, these have like the wide thing so there's multiple inputs here this had a small thing that's one input uh, most of these had uh, wide things so multiple inputs one input 
Um, this has three different inputs, and if you hover over each of these, it tells you what they do. Input two, incremental value. So that's like how much is it going to count? How is it going to count? By threes, by fours, that kind of thing. Uh, input one is a reset button. So if you're counting up to you know a hundred or a thousand or a million, and you want to reset it back to zero, you would you would actually need something in here that would tell it to go, hey, start over. And then finally, the top one is the one that we want to, uh, that tells it to start counting. So if we can give this uh, a number like a one, it will actually count to that next number. And then here's how it works. Uh, we're gonna need something to drive this, to, to make it count. And what we can use, if we double click here, is something called an LFO. Uh, and this LFO, and you can kind of see an LFO is a low frequency oscillator, and it just oscillates back and forth. Uh, every time it hits that one number here, it will actually initiate a count. Is what that's our hope, right? So we're going to take this uh, this thing, this string, and we're going to put it at the top of our counter. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that every time it hits the number one, one, one it counts up and it starts from zero and it's counting up and it will keep counting uh, without limit uh, forever and ever uh, until we reset it until we put a, a, a number one in here uh, it says input reset and then that'll start it over but our counter does have the ability to uh, count from a minimum to a maximum under this tab here under count uh, currently we don't have any limits to our counting but if we put it on loop this allows us to count starting at zero and going until, and in our case, until the number three, right? So now it'll start at zero uh, and go to three. Now, the reason why it's not doing that, I'm gonna right click on this and uh, disconnect and then reconnect it just so you can see, uh, is because we started it halfway uh, while it was counting and it just, anyway, but now it's counting from zero, one, two, three, and then it's back to zero. So this is a way that we can drive our switch, right? So we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna create a null, uh, put our count into the null, lock our null up, select our switch, and then we're gonna select the inside of the null, click and hold and drag it onto our index, export as chop, and notice that warning goes away. And uh, you can see without me doing any work uh, that these, um, the background is actually changing automatically, right? Uh, let me close this up so you can see it. And this is based on this frequency uh, right here. One, it it's usually it's one change per second. The frequency is one, so it hits that number one every second. Uh, if I wanted to slow this down, I would change the frequency to like 0.25. And that would uh, slow this oscillator down. And then this would only change once every four seconds because 0.25. Now notice that we still have the the ability to use this switch one two three four with our keyboard right so we're we're actually able to like move this around this is the one that's automated so would be cool if we can actually use both of these uh, and fade between them so, uh, so that both of them could go to the out because currently we can either just use our keyboard right this is just our keyboard. Or we could use this guy, which is the automated one, when our keyboard's not working. So how do we be? How do we create something where both of these can actually be going to the out point? Um, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so double clicking in the background here uh, uh, will allow us to uh, open up our tops, and we are going to be using a cross fader, C R O S S. And that allows us with two inputs to put a, one movie in the one side and one movie in the other side, as you can see. And then if I output this cross dissolve to the output, you'll see right away that I can see both movies playing at the same time because our slider here is set to 0.5. That means it can see the top one as well as the bottom one, 50% for both. If I move the slider back and forth, you can see how it cross dissolves between uh, these two movies and I can use now my keyboard as well as the automated switcher to switch between these two so now you're probably wanting me to like figure out is there a better way to be able to modify this 
slider so that we can do it uh, using the keyboard um, music keyboard that we have attached to our computers here and the answer is yes that's what we're going to do next is we're going to hook up a MIDI slider uh, to control this cross dissolve okay so uh, review we've got four movies we brought them into a switch uh, we used keyboard uh, input to allow us to switch between the different movies we then created uh, an automatic counting machine that counts from zero to three and then loops to control our secondary uh, switch. We then put them into a cross dissolve, which allows us to go between the first one and the second one. Um, and now what we need is a way of being able to control this number here um, using some type of slider that we have physically uh, on our MIDI keyboard. And that's what we're gonna do now. So before we start, we have to actually tell Touch Designer that our keyboard exists. I think I've already done it for me, but here's how you would set it up in the lab. So you go to Dialogs, MIDI Device Mapper, and you'll notice that there are, so there are no map devices for my thing here, so we're gonna set one up. We're gonna create a new mapping, uh, and then I'm going to click this down area so, there so I can find my MIDI keyboard, which is attached, which is this one. We're going to make the output the same thing, although we're not sending it MIDI data, we're only receiving it. And currently there is no MIDI mapping. Now, if you were lucky enough where your keyboard happened to be in this list, congratulations, you won the lottery. Uh, but otherwise, uh, normally none is what you're going to have here that actually are your keyboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own mapping because uh, it's not in the list if it's you know one of the computers in the lab I think the oxygen eights are in the lab by the way but the way you make your own mapping and which is what I want to do is we're going to select add device and then you're going to select that device and you're going to call it something I'm just going to call it FAUR because that's me uh, the keyboards have buttons as well as sliders and what I'm going to do just to make life easier for everyone is I'm going to remove all the buttons and I'm going to remove all the sliders that are preset here so that we start off with a completely blank slate. Okay, so my MIDI device 4, right, has no sliders, no buttons. I'm going to add a slider by selecting Add Channel to the slider area. And I'm going to move my first slider on my keyboard here. And you can see when I do that, I get a value between 0 and 127 and the message is B000 and then this number is changing so in order to, to set this slider in our map I have to type B0 space 00 space dash 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 means whatever value is given here and then hit return uh, I have now successfully mapped my slider 1 to my first slider if I move slider 2 watch the numbers here Notice that it's exactly the same as the first slider, B0, except it's 0, 1, and then all dash, dash. So if I wanted to add a second slider, I just hit Add Channel. I could copy this, paste it, but change this number here to a 1. And you get the idea. For channels 3, you could, you could copy and paste and change this to 2. Assuming that's 2, you can check right by moving the slider. And lo and behold, it's 2. And then finally, uh, do number three. So now I have four sliders uh, mapped and I can double check um, and I have no buttons mapped. Now if you needed a button we can go over the buttons as well but currently I'm just doing sliders. Okay if I go back to my device mapping I still haven't selected the map that I want to use for this slider control so what I need to do now is select this down arrow find my map select it and now I'm good to go I can close this up now that you have your MIDI device mapped, all you need to do is double click here, go to your chops, and just like keyboard in, there is a MIDI in. Now you don't want to use the MIDI in, you want to use the MIDI in map, because you just made the map, right? Click that, and you'll notice there's one, two, three, four sliders, and if I move the sliders, one, two, three, and four, and they go from zero to one, which is perfect because my cross dissolve goes from zero to one. So how do I add these sliders to this cross dissolve? You probably already know. I lock the MIDI map up, and since I have four possible choices, I can pick whatever one I want. I'm gonna pick the first one, 
and I'm going to drag this into here, let go, export chop. And now if I move that slider, you'll notice that it now moves uh, here as well. So you can see that my output is now affected by the slider. So finally, if we wanted to uh, now present our project here uh, with the, the work that we've done, uh, we will need to uh, actually go to display mode. And the way you do that, I'm going to turn this little button off, is in the upper left hand corner here you see uh, perform mode. And if you click on this button, you'll get this screen and it, you'll notice it's not full screen until you hit the green button. But uh, as it stands now, you can use the keyboard inputs to change things uh, and you can make it full screen. And so we've got our keyboard inputs as well as our sliders working uh, so that you can switch between different things. Uh, and then this is the performance mode. Uh, and if you want to get out of performance mode, uh, just hit the escape key and that'll allow you to continue working uh, on your project. I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save, Save My Project.